Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time zone is for you now or whenever you're watching this thing, this is the Wix Online meeting number 31, June 26th. I can't believe it's almost July. This, this year is flying. I don't know if it feels like that anyway. But the really big question is, who are you rooting for? USA versus Germany? And then, of course, there's Ghana and Portugal. I don't know what you're looking forward to, but that starts in an hour, so we're going to get this meeting done on time. At least... I hope so. <laughs> we don't have that much on the agenda, which I'll get to now. Uh, the agenda, we're going to do triage. Triage now includes walking through all the Wix 3.9 bugs, and then uh, we'll do questions, comments, if there are any. And if there aren't, then you can all get your, your soccer parties ready. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be here right now because they're off getting ready for the games. Are you going to watch the games at all, Bob, or is this just not at all interesting to you? I, I was going to make a comment about how, you know, if you're not going to watch soccer, you can do, you know, almost anything else. Um, but I realize that, you know, some people on the Wix team really like soccer. So. Well, there are two Sounders on the men's national team, and it's entirely possible both of them will start today. So. I see. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. The captain of the U.S. men's national team is Clint Dempsey, and he plays for the Sounders. And the dude's playing with a broken nose because someone kicked him in the face. Well, at least no one ate him. <laughs> there is that. John's like, I'm in a cave. I don't have any TV. Yeah, you don't need a TV. You just need an internet connection, which being here, you have. Um, it doesn't have to be any better than being able to see the video here. Uh, there are there are ways of getting to, to games if you work hard enough, but it did take some preparation. I will give you that. Um, anyway, this means we're being recorded, so I'm going to move on. We're going to go do triage. All right. Triage, ready, Bob? I am ready. All right. But I feel for you, John. I feel for you. couple features, couple bugs. This is a feature based on that title. Enhance, remove folders, EX to remove DIR properties. Yeah, Enhance, this... remove folder, EX to remove DIR, pro remove DIR properties. This, this is... Directory properties. Take yeah. advantage of directory properties. Yeah, this is not... This is not DIR properties and websites, right? No, it's... Oh. DIR properties is not a proper noun in this case. Um, Spelled like one. All right. It is. A slight enhancement tweak mimic the remove file table, which sports DIR property... Oh, the DIR property column. Oh, so remove folder EX doesn't support properties in the, prop, in the folder? It in the, doesn't. Um, no. for, for reasons that I spelled out in my blog post announcing the feature. Um, it's all about timing. Cost finalized is when the directory properties are created, and it's also when costing happens. Yes. So, yeah, you can't, you can't actually do that. Um, Which I, means this would only work if you didn't get it costed. Uh, well, I remo remove file doesn't work without costing. Oh, 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 remove file. Right. Yeah. I forgot this just adds us to remove file, which you have to have done before that, which has to be done before costing, which, yes, how sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I think the answer is we can't unless they know how to do it. Like, that'd be cool if we could do it. Yep. I generally agree. Yeah, oh, I do too. I was actually really disappointed. Um, when I got to this point, I said, oh, yeah, that, that actually, that sucks. Um, but I did spend a fair bit of time on it, and I could not find a way around it. So, Cool. Well, I think we have our answer to the part. And you get to just link over to the blog, too, and say, hey, do you know how to solve that problem? We could do this. Until then, we don't know how. <laughs> Allow options page to be displayed in maintenance mode. I suppose more states for the state machine inside the UI. There's only a certain amount of configuration you can change at that point, but sure, why not? Yeah. Yeah, the only annoying thing is you have to figure out... You can't show the folder. Because you can't move during a maintenance operation. That's right. So, but I know some people don't even use the folder. Their yeah, option uh, is all I'm, about checkboxes. Yep. 
I'm not against it. I'm just, yeah, okay, whatever. I think that could be done in 3.10 or later. I don't think it would break, unless you don't want it in 3x. Sorry, that could uh, be done in 3x. Well, that's, that's a separate, yeah, separate discussion of what we allow into 3x. Right. All right. Allow burn packs to be hidden in ARP. Ugh. This one actually makes sense. When embedding, I could see that we might have to do something there. Yeah, if you have a nested bundle. Yeah, it's a feature. It's not a bug. But otherwise, it's not a horrible right. idea. But I don't want to hide bundles, because then people are going to do bad things, like hiding the bundle and then thinking that stuff's going to get removed, and it's not. Like, everybody's exactly. gotten that wrong, so like only when embedded but not always when embedding right <laughs> yeah it would have to be opt-in mm -hmm. um, and ignored unless embedded or something yeah not trivial not trivial right vs 2013 tfs 2010 mm, I, project binding issues that sounds very confusing we've converted vd proj source control every time we open the project get a pop up detailing the project's known or source control bindings are not valid. Um, this is a combination of TFS and votive, so therefore it is a mystery. How about they go take this on the mailing list and we go talk about it there instead of it's not bound but this I mean so remove the source control bindings. It's a fair point. I assumed that they did that and it didn't stick. But that is an assumption. Put them back on. It works for me. Um, yeah, I I, let's send this to Wix users to go discuss it, and then if it actually turns out to be a problem, then we can have a bit more detail on what's actually the problem. Oh, John, you have to add the entries to say don't bind? Oh, and we converted an existing VD proj to Wix proj. How did they convert it? Yeah, that's either like yeah, so this isn't us because we don't do VD proj stuff. So let's let's kick this to Wix users, figure out what they did. Like, because if they need to go look at they need to go look at their Wix proj and figure out why their bindings are all wrong. Yeah, certainly this needs more information. I think their converter broke their bindings. Is that what you're basically saying, John? John's giving us all these little things. Yes. All right. So let's just leave a comment in there and go. Their converter broke the the converter broke the bindings, so they should go follow up with whoever wrote their converter because we didn't write their converter. And then they need to go fix their bindings, which you can go read about in Visual Studio somewhere. I'm sure. I don't like those SAK binding things that TFS used, which I assume is from like Visual Source Safe days and. Because thank goodness Git doesn't use any of that stuff anymore. Cool? That works for me. All right. You're all quiet over there. I didn't know if you were disagreeing. And look at that. We're done with issues. Ten minutes in and we're done. We spent a whole lot of time talking about... So, anyway, so I don't think I need... That's all on triage. So now I can go do 3.9 open. That works. Cool. So this bottom one, I, I, one of the changes that Heath sent through, I think touched this code. So now I need to go figure out who's right. And I, I just have to go. I was looking at it. And I was like, oh, this touches that and that. But he didn't do it in the same way. So <laughs> now I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on there. So anyway, I'm, I need to follow up with Heath on this one, given I think the crossover in the two code, the codes. Um. This isn't going anywhere. Um. Yeah. Let me quickly. Oh, so you made a pull request. There is a pull request. And. Oh well, then. 
Agreement signed. Okay. I, I really don't like it when people don't use names that we know who they are. Is it on the pull request that says? Yeah. Pull request says that there's an assigned a signed assignment agreement. Who is this? Adrian oh. Zubovich. All right. I have no I that is not a name that that sounds like it's come through. We can go double check that. Okay. I'll go double check that. I, that's not a familiar name to me. Okay. You're still running around chasing a Yulon? Um, awaiting the point at which the people responsible stop replying to me and I can close the bug. Okay. Um, I just need to finish testing this. I've been doing the other things. I just need to finish verifying that that works. Jacob has submitted another cleanup, and then he'll close it. Cool. So this has another pull request, and then this is the pull request 78 or 81 or whatever that I've started looking at. Um, there's more stuff in there than just this, if I'm looking at the right change pull request. So anyway, I will work through that. So I think we're doing all right on getting pull requests pulled through. Yep. I'm going to end up being the person behind. Ugh. Yeah. Yay. We're, we're, we're used to that. <laughs> Thanks. So another build on Monday and keep going like that? Um, yeah, Jacob, I'll get through your pull requests. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like the rest of the stuff I think is, is you know, minor, very minor. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable calling the next build RC. And letting people tell us otherwise. Uh, yes. All right, then. Questions, comments, other things out there? Uh, yeah, Jacob, don't worry. The, the merges of uh, history.md are loads of fun. Um, I usually, it's when we commit, commit that, the history.md entry goes at the top at that time. Uh, for cleanup, we probably we might not actually add an entry. Uh, I, Sean, I waffle about changing the message at this point. The, I, I have it on good authority that the chain that the the bug in that KV article is the the root cause of the problem that we're seeing. Um, but the KB doesn't apply to client versions of Windows, or at least it says it doesn't. And I'm kind of like, I, I don't know that, I don't know that it helps us to point out that KB article. Kind of uh, like I said, I waffled about it. I don't, I don't know that it gives us a whole lot of extra. It doesn't really help the user except to say that there is a bug, and then we say, but it doesn't apply to my version of Windows, and we can just kind of say, well, yes, it does. Uh, I'm confused. What worked for you? Oh, oh. Yeah, the problem the problem with hotfixes is that there are multiple ways that they can get installed. Um so it's it's hard to detect. Um <laughs> actually looking at this problem right now, um first of all, the way to detect a package 
we can't act, we don't have detectors for CBS packages and burn. So you have to look at entries for uh, well, whatever's left in burn, right? And the MSI stuff doesn't count, so it's all down to files and registry values. You can do it, um, but then you have to, well, you can do it, especially if it's documented somewhere, uh, which isn't always the case. And it's not necessarily the case that a hotfix retains its identity when it's rolled up in a, in a, in a hotfix rollup, I think they do. There's no guarantee that it happens in a service pack. So this is a <laughs> this is a real problem. Um, if you need to take some kind of a dependency or a blocker on a particular fix. Um, so that's I think I commented. I didn't want to get into that business, and that's where I'm I'm kind of at. Um, I think it, it's it adds a lot of complexity and you know end of the day we're still back in the into the case of being in an, in an unsupported scenario so I th I think we the block is probably the best thing to do in that case I'm yeah it's open for discussion but I don't I don't see that there's a lot of value there I am I also kind of don't want to get into the yeah I, Every time we add something to Wix standard BA, it's like, oh, there's that, the, you know, um, we're adding, well, in this case, it's mostly, it's in, well, it's not, no, it's not in managed BA where I care less, but, you know, we're just, we're adding stuff of questionable benefit for, you know, that everyone has to carry along, so kind of down on it. The real question is, is your framework going to fix it such that it doesn't install where it can't or shouldn't be well the problem is they've already shipped you know the way they've shipped so they, yeah but <laughs> I think they'll fix it for future releases um, you know there is a bug open I got that much done um, to, to add a blocker but this is you know they're not gonna <laughs> they're not gonna stop ship 451 especially since it was replaced by 452 um, Okay. Yeah. Whatever the next version is. All right. Well, then I, I guess you know the thing blocking us is probably fine, and just making sure that we don't end up in a bad place. Yeah. And yeah. So it'd be interesting if we could find a good way to have people find the KB as a possible workaround without having to do it ourselves. Uh. I don't know what that means. If we can come up with some unique message such that if you search for it, you find our page that can talk about this. That's the only thing I can come up with. My, it, the message that shows up is unique enough that when if you were to go out on the Internet and search for it, hopefully you'd find our page that says, oh, yeah, if you saw this message, you, you might go try getting this. Well, I could write a blog post that talks about it if that's interesting. Yeah, I just, I don't know what the error message said that pops up. Oh, it should be fairly unique. Okay, cool. Then that, that would probably do it. Or, given that unique really shouldn't take a modifier, but I think the message stands out. Okay. I'll take a look. All take right. a look. You know, if it just says, you know, this cannot be installed, that's not going to work out so good. <laughs> right. This, is, well, this cannot be installed because you know you have done a framework on a Win 7 that's not supported, which I'm not sure that's a good message either. You know, that's a bit more unique, something like that. Anyway, that's it. That's the easiest. Or the it's something to think about, right? So if people went what and went and looked, they'd be like, oh, hotfix from Microsoft. I can do that. Or what? And then they just sit there and they call the owner of the or they they call the. The people that they bought the software from, the people from software go search in it and go, oh, here, you need this. And then either way, the loop gets closed in some amount of time. Well, do we want to you know, make it a warning instead of a blocker? Mm, uh, oh, because we won't detect the KB. Mm, right. right. Yes, that is the whole problem. Yeah, yeah, Sean, I think that's, I mean... That's 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 pretty good, right? Yes. 
think even Bing could find that. <laughs> uh, um, right, uh, right now we block, so, you know, I, again, I, I didn't... Yeah, just trying to find hotfixes. No, I agree with you. Well, and the, well, the, pro the hotfix, well, I, I don't know. I mean, th this is primarily an issue for for disconnected scenarios because... Uh, the hotfix is going to be pushed out? Well, it's an SP1. Oh. I mean, Win7 RTM isn't supported. Right now it's SP1. Oh, I see. It's a hotfix that came out later. Well, post RTM pre SP1. And if you're, you know, connected and running, you know, Windows Update, you're you're on SP1 already. Right. It's only it's the disconnected scenario where, yeah. You know, well, I mean, the original bug um, was that was that Tobias? I forget. Um, John, yes, it blocks on RTM, but SP1. Yeah, you know, Sean did the conditioning right. Yeah, so. I, I'm with you. I, it's fine. It's fine. You're right. Getting, I'm sorry. Getting the KB is like I have. I've come all the way around, and now I've caught up to where you are. I agree. Getting the KB on the machine and all that kind of stuff is way overkill. It's like, yeah, just go to SP1. You'll be better supported. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, uh, is the Sean? Did you get the the hotfix right from the KB article, or did you have to jump through extra hoops? I didn't notice. Sometimes they, you know, they don't make the hotfixes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. No. <laughs> if you had to ask them to email it to you, yeah, that means they're not. That means it's an LDR, which is a very limited yeah. distribution. Which, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. All right, Bob. I've caught up to you and Sean. You guys, I, I agree. I think you guys. Yeah. But I do think Sorry, the so, so a okay unique with, message with the I think is still a good idea. That basically, I think you could tell the story of hey, there's this hotfix and yada yada yada. But really, the only way to get it is SP1. So go get SP1, and you'll be fine. The only thing I ask, ask then is, should we say, add to the message? You know, Wix bundle name cannot run on Windows 7 RTM with .dot framework 452 or greater installed. Please upgrade to Windows 7 SP1. It's a bit more directive, uh, but it would like right now we're not telling them how to fix it. They have to figure out what do I true. do. And we the answer make, is yeah. go get SP1 because right. it's the best way to be safe and happy and good. Hmm. The only downside is if some person, some you know, company using Burn is like no. Don't tell my, you know, customers, you know, ISV. Don't tell my customers they have to install SP1, and we'd be like, tough. That's the error message. <laughs> <laughs> well, and actually, Sean, Sean I don't recall. Um, oh, it's it localizable. Then fine. I would add SP1 in it. If, this is this is the typical. You need three sentences for everything, and two, I think, is gonna be fine here. Of the, what's wrong, and how do you fix it? Right, 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 right. Yeah, let's do that. That works. Then, and actually, I was just thinking, Sean, we could put in the in the code, we could put comments and even a link to the KB. That could serve as our, you know, if someone gets really cranky about the SP1 suggestion, you can say, hey, look, it's, you know, documented, and here I'm using air quotes that you can't see. Uh, Oh, the, that's problem right. is that, the problem is that the KB is not going to fix it, right? So the only thing the KB does is tell you that this is a problem? No, the KB fixes it. The The, the problem is a bug in Windows, not in... Right, in but if you install the KB, we still will block you. Oh. So it doesn't yes. fix it. Yes. <laughs> so the only thing you can do is say, hey, if you want to read more about the problem, this is it. Note that fix won't fix it. <laughs> Just don't get too excited because you can't actually fix it. You, you still, like, the answer is still go to SP1. Mm. Yeah, unless we want to get into try to detecting to try detecting the the KB. Oh, uh, compatibility mode. Go like down to Vista or XP. No, no. <laughs> that doesn't sound quite right. 
creative well, to try to use compatibility mode to work around the problem. That just doesn't sound right. I wouldn't yeah, recommend no, no, it. No, just that's <laughs> all kinds of other things that are going to go interesting from there. Um, there could be other side effects of that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm inclined just to say go to SP1. Yeah, I think that's I think that's reasonable. And but if they really want to go beat up on us, we're like, yeah, the .NET framework screwed up, which is actually part of the problem here. By not having a blocker, yes. Exactly. By allowing this to happen when they don't support it. Yeah, John, it's 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 like RTM isn't supported by Microsoft anymore. It's now SP1. So I'm I'm just I would say, let's try and add an SP1 message to the localized text and declare this feature complete. Sean, that work for you? Oh, all right, awesome. <laughs> okay, and he'll even do the work. That's doubly awesome. <laughs> Um, actually, we can drop it. Um, I'm I'm highly confident that whatever the next version <laughs> of .NET is, um, it will have a block. Yeah, the greater than is a bit. The problem is that you require people to do logic, which is not <laughs> everybody's strong suit in the world. So <sighs> just take that out and call it good. Yeah, I, I like it. You have this, you have this, although even telling them you have .NET Framework 4 or 5 too, a lot of them might be, uh, okay. <laughs> but, right. um, yeah. Cool. Let's call that good. Move on and not talk about this issue ever again. Um, <laughs> we've talked about this one a lot. Um, anything else? Anything else going? Going? All right, you guys are going to have a half hour to set up your office, whatever else you're going to do. If you know you want to watch that game. Jacob, are you watching the game? You weren't here when I asked. Let's see if he says what game. He <laughs> 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 uh, doesn't even spell it right. Sakor. Well, <laughs> I think that's a sign. <laughs> Spelling a sign. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone, not everyone lives, you know, close to a to, close to a team. Yeah, that that's fair. Actually, I think most of you guys don't. Yeah, the Midwest areas just don't have anything. Plus, it's you know the United States mostly around us, and <laughs> uh, well, hey, this game got the highest ratings ever. Um, the game versus Portugal. Yeah, um, yeah. So that was that's a step in the right direction. Anyway, you guys come out, any of you guys come out to Seattle, and it's anywhere around, anytime you plan to come out to Seattle, look at the Sounders schedule, it's online, you can go find it, you know, soundersfc.com, and look there, and then if you plan your time around, let me know, and we'll go to a game, and you will be converted, maybe, <laughs> probably, it's a lot of fun. And you should check the schedule because if there's a game, you know, Rob won't be available. That, that's, okay. that's actually a good point. If you don't check the schedule and you're like, hey, Rob, let's hang out. I'm like, no, I'm at the game. <laughs> no, KC isn't bad either. I don't like them for different reasons, but uh, I have no problem with someone supporting, you know, supporting KC. Um, <laughs> they're, they're a good team. I just don't don't like the way they've... They, they, yeah questionable things in finals against Sounders that made things not so good at the end. And we have very long memories in soccer. So at this point, this is degraded into soccer talk, so unless there's anything about Wix, which is actually pretty impressive considering that I got this to be talk about soccer, even though no, three-fourths of the people on the good. call have already ca called out that they don't care. <laughs> that's not bad. Uh, not bad, not bad. Um, and hopefully slightly entertaining those people that watch this on TV, or sorry, watch this on TV, watch this on YouTube later, they'll be like, oh, that's cool, that's cool, I should have been there. We could have been talking about the, you know, men's national team and all the things that they might do. Or, <sighs> or, or they'll just be like, when does this call end and do they say anything else useful? No, we didn't say anything more useful. At that point, I'm calling the end of this. Uh, as always, uh, peoples, it was good. We're back through all the bugs. 
I need to go through my things. If you have any Wix 3.9 stuff, get them done. But I think Jacob Alda did, and that just means it's me and Heath and somebody else that thinks he's signed an assignment agreement. So I think we're all looking good, assuming I get my stuff done. And even if I don't, I suppose I'll just get punted to next time. So on that note, you guys have a wonderful day. Again, the game starts in, I forget, is it an hour or a half hour? I never know with the pregame. The TV will have it on in a half hour. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.